going to go ahead and take the phthalo blue and mix some, a little bit of white. And I'm going to do more of a blue shade in a few places. So you can see um, I've got two shades going on right now and there's only one more shade I think I'm going to work with. Um, it dries pretty fast too because I'm using thin layers of paint. So at this point I think I'm going to do a little bit of the phthalo green and white. So it makes a very pretty mint green color. And I just thought that would be very pretty to add to the bird as another shadow color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start applying it in a few places. very pretty already but I haven't even begun to use the white yet and that's coming next and we'll work on the legs in a bit so I'll stop here Let's just go ahead and whatever was on your brush from working with the last color, which was the mint green, just add some white to it. And let's go ahead and take off a lot of the paint. Um, I don't want to have a whole lot of paint on my brush, so I'm just going to wipe it on, mostly on my tray here. And I really want a feathery look, so I am going to work with strokes that give it a very, you know, feathery look. So you can see, I can even angle it so that I get more of a really soft feathers. And I'm just gonna keep working with that paint. Um, layering and layering is very, very important in a painting like this. So uh, you probably won't like it the first application that you do but um, as it dries it's going to dry darker so let's just keep applying and applying and applying until um, you're at a place where you're happy with it and right now I'm just going to go ahead and work with the first layer and as you can see I'm just I'm just oh I've got these really fun feathers right here so I really want to accentuate those and come around his eye and keep, I want to keep some of that beautiful lavender and turquoise blue that's right in here. So I'm just going to um, leave it there and just keep brushing this white on. It's very soft and very pretty. This bird is definitely uh, camouflaging in, which is what really what they like to do. So I'm going to apply some more white here because I really want that wing to pop out. I'm not working with a straight white either. This white was definitely kind of blended in with what was ever on my paintbrush already. But I definitely want to see this top part of the wing be much more solid. So I'll just keep applying it there and on the top of his head where the sun would be shining and maybe around his eye a little bit more. And definitely right here. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these again. I just love these little feathers right here. And then 
lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and give these little feathers down here a little bit of a curl. And look how pretty that's coming out with all of the other, other tones um, coming through. Let's see, this leg is in front. And you could go ahead and, like I said, this is a chisel brush, so it has um, a, uh, a very sharp edge. And what I like to do is use that when I'm doing these little outer feathers right here. Isn't that pretty? Again, I'm gonna come back over here because I really want that wing to pop out. So I've pretty much gone over this particular part of the wing about four times now. Gonna keep that one is kind of catching the light from the sun up above and then this one I just putting just a few little strokes it's going right into the water and that's really it I might wake up a little of these toes a little that's about it Lot of color and lose this lovely Payne's gray so I'm just gonna lightly come across the top and I kind of went over his eye but that's okay because all I want to do is take um, the Payne's gray I'm gonna just take the Payne's gray and go right back over where the eye goes Outline the bottom again. Maybe I'm gonna darken up the tip a little because it looks like I didn't really get it solid. And that's about it. I don't wanna, um, again, there doesn't need to be a whole lot of detail. Um, just kinda wanted to make sure that my beak was um, definitely, I'm gonna go ahead and darken this up too right here. It's a diff I wanted it to be a different color than everything else. So I kinda gave it a little bit, looking at my drawing, always looking at my little sketch here I want to make sure that you know I kind of somewhat kind of copy what I'm seeing and then it's whenever I'm um, doing an eye because it's you know such a detailed um, a detailed part of the painting I'm just gonna take a little of the white and it would just be the little you know the, just a little tiny uh, glint in his eye whoops and just do that and that's really all it needs just a little little dot there so now we're ready to do the water and the reeds that are coming in the front okay so let's go ahead and start with the water um, this was just really a base so I'm gonna go back to the darker blue that I used, which was the ultramarine blue I'm gonna mix some Payne's gray in that I want a nice dark tone because there would be um, parts of the water that are um, you know, dark from the, the movement of the water. So I'm just gonna kinda let that glide. Especially, this is just Payne's Gray and the Ultramarine Blue. And I need to get this back here where the reeds are. As you can see, I don't put a whole lot of um, thought into this. I'm just letting, just sort of letting it do its thing. My hands, mine just kind of gliding my hand and that's it. And then I'm gonna soften this so that it kind of fades into the painting, the background of the painting. And there would be reflections of all of this in the water. 
And so I def don't want to forget about that. So what I'm going to do is take that same color that I made my green, which was the uh, phthalo green. And go ahead and do some reflections in the water. And it doesn't have to be, you know, um, all lined up and perfect because it's because the water is moving, the reflection is always moving as well. I'm going to go ahead and pick that lighter shade, that one that had the yellow in it, and do a little bit of that because that would be reflecting in the water as well. Not a whole lot of it though. And even the orange color that we made in our reeds. It, we mem remember we took the orange and mixed it with the green. So just a hint here and a hint there. Okay, so now I'm ready to do some, some of the painting in the front. Okay, so I'm gonna take the phthalo green and mix it with my yellow. And just, this is the hard part because you're gonna have to go over parts of your bird. So this is where you're gonna have to be brave. And so what I'm gonna do is, first I'll start with the phthalo green and just go right over. And that's where I'm going to stop. I don't want to do a whole lot and cover up a lot of him, but he is hiding, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to be where he's just, you know, out in the open because he wouldn't be doing that. I'm going to go ahead and pick a different kind of foliage just to break it up. As you can see, I'm just really freehanding this. There's no sketching um, when it comes to this. I'm just going to go ahead and go right off of the camera. I'm going to go ahead and take more of a lime color by taking my yellow that I had made earlier and mix it with the phthalo green and go ahead and highlight some of these leaves in the front. This is the fun part, doing all the detail. Gonna do that orange color too. Remember where we um, had made the this orange tone? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that in a few places. These the the plants that are in the front definitely need to look like they're in the front. So we're gonna make them pop and, and really highlight them. That's about it. I didn't have a whole lot. Oh, here's one right here in the front. So I wanna, don't wanna forget that. And one of the other things I wanted to do that I haven't done yet, and um, instead of putting highlights, we're gonna put some really dark shades. So let me just finish up here. I think that's good. I think I wanna stop there. So what I'm gonna do now, is take the Payne's Gray straight and I'm gonna just go ahead and hit some of these way in the back just so they look really shadowed now I've got all kinds of wonderful tones going on Just 
just a few. We don't need a whole lot of them, just enough to kind of really make the ones in the front pop out. See what's happening here by adding some of this really dark toned, all the ones that are way, way in the back. This makes it so much richer. And again, this is a personal thing. I would just go ahead and apply as much or as little as you want. You'll know when you feel that it's done. You'll look at it and just feel like this is a place to stop. And I'm, I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. and take that Payne's Gray. I'm going to use a bigger brush and just hit some of these pockets right here. Pockets of uh, water. Just really deepen those up as well. Sometimes I just use my finger if I want to smooth it out. Right. So I think this is where I'm going to stop. I can always go back to it um, tomorrow if I look at it and find that there's some other areas that need to be, you know, um, played with a little bit more. So you can see, like, I look at parts of it and go, okay, I'm going to darken his little claw right here. But sometimes it's good just to stop and, you know, just let the painting sit there for a day or two and see if there's anything else that you know talks to you and tells you to change so um but for right now i think this is this is where i'm gonna stop um give it a day or two and maybe put a nice clear coat on it Thank you for taking my class today. Feel free to post any of your paintings on my Facebook page. I'd love to show them off and share my YouTube channel with all your family and friends. Bye for now. Happy painting.